this video, I want to go over how to use battery for things like using Native Instruments expansions, because you don't need a machine to use these expansions. And a lot of people have battery. Maybe they got it back in the day with an older version of Complete or a recent version of Complete. But lots of us have this virtual instrument and it can do a ton of stuff. So what I want to do is walk you through how you can use Native Instruments expansions with battery, but also maybe just a primer on battery or a reminder of the amazing things it can actually do because it is a powerful little piece of software. It has been around for a long time, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't be using it. Got to say I'm using a MacBook Pro today, an older MacBook Pro, because last week my Mac Pro died. It's 2013 Mac Pro, amazing computer, 32 gigs of RAM, terabyte of flash storage, and it lasted for a very long time, but it bit the dust. And I do have a new MacBook Pro actually on order. I should have ordered it sooner because it's not coming here till December. So I'm gonna make do with my old MacBook Pro. I think this is like a 2016. And uh, I apologize for the fan noise, but this is what I'm stuck with for at least a month. And once a new one comes, I'll be, uh, I'll be cooking, that's for sure. So battery itself, a uh, whole bunch of cells and you can load samples on there. And they don't call them pads, they call them cells. And it's very easy for you to configure things in battery. So when you install the, the factory content, you have a whole bunch of kits and you have a whole bunch of samples. So a kit is just gonna be one arrangement of a whole bunch of samples made by Native Instruments or by yourself or your buddy. And so you can have user content or factory content. The kits can have all sorts of things loaded on the cells you can have whole different arrangements of cells as well. So we can click this little button right here and we can go to the cell matrix and we can say, I just want a four by four, just like machine or something like that. So now we've got four, uh, four by four cells. You could drop in a whole bunch of samples, say if you had one of those M audio controllers that had these 16 pads just like this and it's very easy to configure each cell to the corresponding pad on your device. So in each one of these cells, you can load a sample and I can go over to samples right here and I can start looking for things like, let's go look for a mallet and then maybe we'll try some kind of bell. If I turn on this little speaker icon, then we can hear the sounds. So let's take this little guy right here. We'll just drag and drop right on there. All right, so now that I've got a sample loaded on here, you can just click on it to hear hear what the sample sounds like. We can see the sample down below. If I wanted to, with this one sample, go to the key range and I could click on the MIDI and say I want it to start at C1 and go all the way up to C2. And all I have to do is click and then now I've instantly got those mapped. And if you're in machine, you're gonna see the lights show up. If you have this battery loaded in complete control on any other program, you'd have the same thing. You'd have the lights giving you a visual representation. Right now, if I wanted that to work kind of like it does in keyboard mode on a machine, I would need to do something to this so that as I move up the keyboard, the note changes. And in order to do that, all we have to do is click over on setup. And then here I click on key track and watch what happens. As I move up the keyboard, we can hear that note changing. So that's basically what these cells are. They're places to load sounds. Normally people are used to loading drum kits and drum sounds on there. You can also access sounds by right clicking on the cell. You go to some place on your hard drive and find a sample to chuck on there. So next thing we'll do is just have a quick look at the kits and what the kits are. So when you load up a kit, double click, You'll often find that the first cell is just kind of mapped all the way down to the bottom of your keyboard, and then the last cell goes all the way up. So we've got the snare right there. Let's say I like that snare and figure I'm Never gonna use that percussion hit right there. Well, I could copy this cell, so copy cell, and then go paste cell. So I paste cell. Now I've got another snare right there, and then I could go and do something like reverse it. And if I want that start to be a little sooner, I could just move this end time over because it's reversed. And then now it's this reversed snare. We've got the tuning, we've got the pan, left or right, we've got level for the overall sound of this cell. And the master is where you're gonna have control for 
you know, everything in this entire battery kit. So we've got things like buses. We can send a whole bunch of different samples out to one bus and then do some effects, say, on just one group of cells. We've got reverb and delay for the whole kit. So if I click on, say, this snare right here and go back over to main, we can see we've got sends over on the right hand side. So if I turn this reverb up, more of this snare is going to go to that reverb effect that we see over on the master. So a really quick and easy way to add variable amounts of reverb and delay to any one of your cells. And the nice thing is you can just turn this off right here. And then over on this one, we've got our delay settings. But now you can hear I only have reverb and delay on my snare. And here, if I want to put that on my kick, I need to change the settings on the kick. So I go back over to the main and you can see my snare. I've got my sends cranked up over to the kick and do the same thing if I wanted to put delay and reverb on just the kick. Now if we go back over to the master, we'll see some other effects down at the bottom. And with these ones, we've got things like a filter. And this is going to filter the entire kit. So if I turn this off, now we can hear that that filter is affecting everything. Go over to the compressor and, and we could put a compressor on the entire kit. This one here is the transient master. So that's uh, affecting the transients or the shape of the sounds. And then last thing we've got here is some saturation, some tape style saturation and a limiter. So let's go back over to the main page and look at some of these other settings down below of the main thing with the volume envelope we can control how the sound is shaped over time. So if I take this sample right here, turn the volume envelope on. I'm on the wrong sample. So I need to turn that off because I'm actually on the kick right now. With this button on, now when I select a note via MIDI, it gets selected down in battery, which I'd rather see. So I've got our pad sound right here. And let's crank up the attack so it takes a little longer for this sound to fade in. Now you can hear it's taking taking a while to get in or we can play with the decay so it drops off really quickly as soon as i take my finger off i crank this down keep going a bit more if i want more control we actually have full attack hold decay sustain release so these are typical things Typical envelope shapes that you'd find on synthesizers going way back to the 70s, probably. We've got pitch envelopes. Velocity is going to volume. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Let's go to this hi-hat right here and change velocity to go to uh, semitones. So here are the pitch is changing the harder I play the note. Next, we've got engine, which determines how does the this, this sample sound, and it actually has a way to degrade your sample to make it sound like old 8-bit samplers if you want. So you can click on vintage and choose from a variety of sounds of old classic samplers. We've got a filter, which we could just turn on to filter out certain frequencies, either high frequencies or low frequencies. And then we've got a basic compressor and then our sends on the other side there. Now we can see effects for each individual sample. So as I select through them, I can go on here and I can put some lo-fi effects just on this one right here. I can put some saturation on this one right here. Each one of these effects here are specific to each sample, but we've got saturation, we've got lo-fi, which is just adding some grit to, to your sound so we can make it sound uh, like an old, crunchy computer sample. We can add some noise to it and change the color of the noise. All right, so that's the lo-fi settings. Then we've got the filter and we can do all sorts of modulation to this filter as well, just like we can on synthesizers, compressor, and the transient master or the transient shaper there as well. Next, we've got modulation, which is where we would go use controls like a sine wave to modulate some kind of parameter. So maybe we would take this 
LFO right here, LFO1, and we would assign it to, let's go to a different sound. And if I go to LFO1, we can see it's a sine wave. I can change the shape right here. A saw wave looks like a sawtooth. A pulse is just up and down or a square wave. And then random is just going to be kind of potentially all over the place. But let's go to sine wave, which is kind of perfect up and down. And we are going to say LFO1 is going to modulate which control? Now it's going to modulate the tuning of this lead sound right here. So you can hear it perfectly going up and down because it's a sine wave. If I change that to a saw wave, it's going to start up here, drop down, and then jump right back up. And then if I go to pulse, it's going to be on top, then bottom, then top, then bottom. And then of course we can change the frequency. So it goes slower or faster. And then we can do things like change uh, how quickly it kicks in. And then we've got pulse width modulation, which means you can make this kind of up and down square wave. You can make it kind of lopsided. So watch what happens when I crank it to the right. Now it's like really long, short, really long, short. Almost like swung. Dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a, right? Anyways, so that's how easy it is to assign modulation to any control. And there's a lot more stuff that we can do in there as well. Next, we've got the setup so we can do things like uh, this one's kind of a fun one. If I go to, say, this closed hi hat, I'm going to copy this cell onto this one right here. So I have two different hi hats. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the articulation for this second cell. Isn't that cool? So it gives you the ability to make really complex little rolls and stuff that you could have on something like your hi-hats and just have these assigned to different keys, the same sample that's doing this kind of fancy articulations. Anyways, get very complex without having these abilities to, you know, do your hi-hats really quickly. Have you ever watched Blue Lab Beats? That dude can play one finger on a hi-hat faster than I could ever do like four fingers on a hi-hat. It's insane on machine. Check out Blue Lab Beats, one of my favorite groups. For uh, voice groups, let me just show you a new kit. I'm going to go new kit and then we're just going to go to samples and I'm going to go to the browser and we're going to not look for mallets. We're going to look for drums and I'm going to go for a hi-hat closed. Okay, let's just drop that one on there and then we'll go to this cell and we'll go to hi-hat open. I need a nice long one here. There we go. Okay. So now I've got... And here that open hi-hat just keeps ringing. Well, sometimes when you get expansions, they don't have groups set up like this, voice groups. On machine, we call it choke groups and on battery, they call it voice groups. So all I would have to do is make sure that these two things are on the same voice group. So I could click like this to select them all, all or if I had, had other things on there, I could just shift click on both of them. And I'm going to set them to be set to voice group one. And I could even rename that and just call that hats. Yo, there we go. Now when I play one sample, the other one gets cut off which is what you want with a closed hi-hat, open hi-hat scenario. Okay, so the next thing we need to figure out is how to find the content from Native Instruments expansions. And we can load the content either as kits or as samples. And so if I go over to the search window right here, I can type in Burnt Hues, because that's one of the ones I've just got a video on. It's brand new, it's really good. I'll put a link in the description. This expansion pack has such good sounding kits. So I can double click on a kit. And what I'd probably want to do with these now, because they're all kind of these... Here it's continuing on. So if I switch to another one, it's still kind of going according to this vol volume envelope. 
And I could turn that off entirely, so now it just plays the entire sample. It's kind of like one shot. Right? So if I turn these volume envelopes off, now what I would want to do is make sure these samples are in their own little voice group. So shift click. And then shift click down here. There we go. So I've got all of those samples selected. I'm going to put them all in their own little group. And so now they are actually cutting each other off so that I don't get overlap of all of these different loops. Let's, let's try a different kit out. Let's go to High Art Kit. I probably want to go in and adjust the volume of like these hi-hats. feel like they're a little loud in comparison to the rest of the kit. Do the same thing with this one. And then I'd probably pan them a little bit, you know, get the hi-hats over out of the way a bit. Now let's go find a kit that has some really nice samples, loops, licks, whatever that we want to play around with. My love is ice cold. Okay, let's try playing with this for a little bit. I'm going to set the tempo here in machine. So one, two, three, four. So something like. So let's say this loop right here is a little too fast for my song. You can hear it's not lining up. But let's say we like the key, but we just need to get this in time with our little idea here. So we need to slow that down. I'm going to go over to my main page and I'm going to go to stretch. And we're going to set it to this pro mode. Might be a little harder on the CPU, but that should be fine. And we're going to slow this down by a little bit. It's too slow. That one's a little too fast, so we'll go over to stretch. We'll keep it on pro. That's pretty darn close. We'll go with that. Okay, we can see that this one here is 81 beats per minute. It actually lists it for us, which is kind of nice. We're really close. I do wish there was some way to see like numbers here, you know, or beats per minute or something like that, but we don't have that. So we'll just try slowing it down. All we have to get is two beats per minute. And with this one as well, I'm going to turn on the volume envelope. I'm going to set it to ADSR so that it stops when I release my finger. That's really close. So we're probably not going to have to change it much. Let's try. We'll try 98%. So that's one way for you to find a loop and get it to fit in with the tempo of your song if your tempo is already set in stone, right? You might need it to, to fit to the tempo of your song. So let's go over to Burnt Hughes and try something else out, Glitch Coast. that a nice bass which we could probably use as a bass instrument if we could map it out because right now it's just playing the same note all the way up and down all I need to do is go over to setup turn on key track now it's moving up the keyboards you notice how the the root key really changed it in order to change that all we need to do is go over to the editor change the root key so let's maybe try making that C2 But if it's the wrong note, just keep going up in semitones and you'll hear the note go opposite direction. 
until you find the right starting note. Now I could go in and start playing with the bass. What you might want to do is make an entirely new track just for this bass sound right here. Now we can right click on this and we can go copy cell and then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make a new battery. And then on this one here, I could make this, you know, a lot smaller for starters. Let's make it just four by four. And then I'm going to right click on that cell and I'm going to go paste cells. And now I've got my base patch as an entirely different track. So if you want to work that way in your software, it's very easy to do that to, onto a new battery kit. So one more thing I should mention is the editor on battery. This one deserves a video all unto itself. But in here you can do all sorts of stuff like uh, take this sample right here. I can change the start and end times very easily. Take this synth thing right here and I could say, all right, I want this to be just this sound. And then I could option drag this one over here. So now I've got this sample right here. And then on this one, I could choose an entirely different start point. So here's a different sound. So now on those two cells, you can do some slicing type stuff in battery. It's just not going to be automatic. Um, there's other things that you can do in here, but they are destructive editing. So you can remove portions of a sample. So I could go, all right, let's just take this whole chunk right here and I just want to get rid of it. So we're going to cut that. And then now all we have on there is that, uh, that one sound. And then now that's my start point. So I can say instead of cut, so let's take this right here now and we'll choose crop. There we go. Now we've got just that sample. And you can do things like looping the sample. You can have certain, only certain portions looping. Uh, you can have it start at a certain point and then loop all the way back to the beginning of the sample past that starting point that you set. And so there's a ton of stuff we can do with the editor in battery. And I think I would probably want to do an entirely different video on that. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how to use the expansions and use them in a way that compensates for either the pitch, so changing the pitch of something like a loop, you easily just find some sound that you want and just go to the main page and then change the tuning. And if that now has given you the wrong speed, then you go over to stretch and you speed it up. And it keeps it at the same pitch. So choose your pitch up top, choose your speed down below and and then the other thing is how to take samples and map them out along the keyboard. And then of course, how to find your expansions that you've installed. All you have to do is type the name of your expansion up top. So whichever expansions you have installed. So for example, I also have Aquarius Earth, another really great expansion loaded on here. I type in Aquarius Earth and that's all I see here are the kits for Aquarius Earth. So really easy to find the kits that come with your expansion. It'd be great if we had like a nice little picture to click on. I can also go to the samples and say, all right, what comes with Aquarius Earth? And click off any metadata. And then these are all the samples that come with Aquarius Earth. The, the expansion kits that Native Instruments are putting out, they're not even calling them machine expansions anymore. They call them Native Instruments expansions for good reason because you don't have to have machine to use them. Check them out. Check out the expansions. I'll put some links in the description and make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell and we'll see you in the next video.